Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years. Hi, I'm Cherry Johnson with Watauga County Arts Council, and as you probably know if you watch this very often, we often spend some of our time uh, promoting other arts activities that are happening all through the community because we believe you should be involved in the arts no matter who's doing them. Uh, we are excited to have Appalachian's theater department in our community. They do so many cool productions, and I'm really excited to be able to pre present to you some folks for, that are putting on The Countess, mm -hmm. is this correct? Yep. Uh, this is Paulette. Paulette, mm -hmm. Marty, mm -hmm. okay, and Sue Williams. Uh, Marty, uh, Paulette is the uh, director yep. of this production, director and you're the a theater uh, uh, professor. Yep, I'm a theater mm -hmm. faculty member. Okay, mm -hmm. and Sue, you're with the costuming. Mm -hmm. Costume designer. Do you mm -hmm. teach costume design as well? I do, sometimes, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you also sew? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A <Yeah>. lot. A <laughs> lot. <laughs> and then we have Jake Daly. You might remember Jake. He's been here before uh, with Varied Productions. And are you a senior now? I am. I figured you must be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jake's the star. <laughs> this is his last show with us. Uh, Paulette, tell us about The Countess. What is this show about? Um, it's about, uh, the, well, Jake plays um, uh, John Everett Millay, who is a 19th century British painter. Mm -hmm. um, his most famous painting is Ophelia, mm -hmm. uh, and and but he's his work. He did a lot of work. Um, it was used in advertisements. It's very you would know if you saw some, some of his paintings, you hmm. would recognize them, mm -hmm. even if you don't know his name. Um, wow. He was a really prolific and famous painter in the 19th century, and um, <clears throat> he actually uh, came to to fame very young. And part of what uh, really catapulted him in his career was there was an art critic named John Ruskin who mm -hmm. was very well respected, and he um, championed Millay and some of his uh, some of his friends. Uh -huh. um, and so that's really what kind of um, put them over the edge into um, real uh, high reputations and real stardom in the British art world. Mm -hmm. um, and so then shortly thereafter, um, <clears throat> uh, John Ruskin, the art critic, invited Millay to come to Scotland with he and his wife um, for a, sort of a painting holiday, to go mm -hmm. and be in a cottage where right. Ruskin could write and Millay could paint. And Millay fell in love with Ruskin's wife. And, and so that's <laughs> the incident that this play is about, just sort of how that happens and what these relationships are like between pr primarily these three people, but then also the other people in their lives. Now, how does the word countess fit into this whole thing? Well, you want to talk about that, Jake? Uh, sure. Uh, the countess is uh, actually a nickname that John Everett Millay gave to John Ruskin's wife oh, okay. uh, while in Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, Reasons have been uh, kind of varied, but one of the um, theories behind the nickname is just that he thought uh, John Ruskin's wife, Effie, was a very dignified woman, very mm -hmm. proud, mm -hmm. very royal, just had this quality of beauty and grace and all these right. uh -huh. qualities of what he thought uh, royalty would have. Ah, okay. Now, this is set in what time frame, Sue? I guess you know that as well as anybody does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, you could say in a very large context, it's set in the Victorian era, which is a huge, huge period of time. It's really set most specifically in 1853, 54, mm -hmm. right around, they go over December into the next year. So that puts it in a real specific period in terms of the look mm -hmm. of it, of the mm -hmm. costumes and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so everyone is, is currently is in costume. I've heard of productions mm -hmm. like this that were set in a different time, but they were wearing contemporary costumes and yeah. things like that. This but, one mm -hmm. is this one is um, I can't imagine doing that mm -hmm. because it's so much about these particular people that lived in this particular right. place and right. time. Um, and so we we never even on this one discussed that no, possibility. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this sounds dramatic mm -hmm. as opposed to comedic. Yes. Okay. It is. I mean, it's got some funny moments. Mm -hmm. um, Jake's character is, he's a little quirky. He's, <laughs> he's an artist. What do you he's, an artist. <laughs> he's a quirky young artist. And so there's definitely some funny moments yeah. in it, but it's, in, it's inherently a, a dramatic piece. Yeah. As this, your, let's see, you're graduating in the spring. So mm -hmm. will this be your last production? It will be. It will be my last uh, main stage production with Appalachians. So you're going out with a bang. 
Yes. <laughs> yes, very much so. This has been a spectacular show to go out on. That's great. Now, what, what's been the most exciting part of, of doing this production, or maybe the most challenging part? Oh, um, well, probably the most challenging yet, like, the most interesting aspect is the fact that these are historical characters. Mm -hmm. And there's so much information about them. And I've never gotten a chance to do a role or work on a character that actually came from history. So it's just been an entirely different um, process. So you had to do research and a lot of things it, like that? Uh, it was a great deal of different kind of research. Mm -hmm. It was a different, almost like a different area of research. Because usually I would have to look up, uh, I would research the world that the plays would be set mm -hmm. in and, uh, and then look at what the play presented about the characters, if they were fictional, and just come and be able to fill in the gaps myself. But with a historical character, I've had to do a lot of research on them, what their biography led to, what um, primary sources said about their, about their personality, and it's more of trying to embody that, be like, okay, what, was, what would it have been like to cause all those characteristics mm -hmm, so that I mm -hmm. personally can personify them as best as I can. So you can become the person. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a true story? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so does, um, I don't want to give away the ending, but I mean, is it one of those stories that you end up going, why in the world did I, you know, was that that story or was it one of those you're like, okay, this is one I feel good about. I feel like I've walked away with a sense of completion. <laughs> Well, Ooh, that's Paulette. an interesting question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Not knowing the end of the story. The, well, the way, the, and I won't give anything away, but um, the way that the playwright wrote this story is I've really come to admire and appreciate mm -hmm. because it's got this, I mean, Effie is really the central character, mm -hmm. um, and it's really her story of sort of navigating her feelings for these two men, okay. right? Mm -hmm. um, and and she sort of in the in the second to last scene of the play, there she has um, resolution about that. Uh huh. I mean, she sort of makes a decision, and and we kind of feel like, okay, that's the decision, you know. Yeah. But then there's this last scene <laughs> that you feel like, okay, that was I got a handle on that. I feel satisfied. And then this last scene comes, and it really sort of throws you for a loop. Um, and, and leaves you, you were feeling satisfied and like you could, you know, uh -huh. go home and rest easy. Yeah. And then this last scene comes at you and you, it sort of unsettles you again. Interesting. So you so, leave with that something does, not quite yeah. there. Yeah. What I really like uh -huh. about this, about this production and this play is that, um, is that it really presents these characters as, as very complex human beings mm. and you know so many plays about historical characters there might be one really complex one and then the rest are just sort of simple archetypes that are there right. to represent the eccentric artist or the this mm -hmm. or the that you know and and this play really doesn't do that especially with the three central characters there's a lot of ambiguity and mm. complexity mm -hmm. in them and um and that's really really fascinating to me interesting very so, interesting. That, yeah. That's intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. So, now Sue, I've got a question for you. Uh -huh. Sounds like, from the outsider's point of view, because I've never done what you do, mm -hmm. uh, that your work is primarily well in advance of the production. Well, some of it is. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, research, mm -hmm. also um, meetings, working with the other designers, and right. talking with the director, and reading the play over and over and over, and trying to figure out the approach you want to take. That kind uh -huh. of thing. Um, and uh, designing the costumes, drawing the pictures, you right. know, all that. This is what they're going to look like. But they're still, while they're in rehearsal now, you know, that's, that's when we're building everything. Mm -hmm. We're in the costume mm -hmm. shop is in full swing and um, producing everything that we need. And it won't all be done until it's time for the show to open. I mean, it all kind of coincides. It all happens at the same so time. So once the show opens, your job is finished? Or do you still stick around to 
tuck and no in actually and generally speaking if you're the designer once the show opens it's kind of like the director your job is finished now in educational theater your job's never really totally finished <laughs> you're still around <laughs> but we do have people who take over we have mm -hmm. a particular you know a crew of students the wardrobe crew whose job it is to take care of the costumes during the show okay, that's what to do thinking. the laundry to do repairs to do quick changes backstage mm -hmm. to keep track of everything that's their job so mm -hmm. yeah technically once the show opens then you can sit back I can sit back and watch it <laughs> yes yeah. mm -hmm. so so all of this process takes how long how long has it been since you selected this play and then all of this was wow. put together <laughs> that's um, a good question. let's long see time. a really long time um, uh, we I first proposed this play for production mm -hmm. in um, it was well, I first read it in October of 2013 mm. and um, and then it was selected in um, no, actually, that no, would have been 2012. 2012. It would have been 12. And then it was actually selected. We, we put the season together in January of 2013. 13. Mm -hmm. And so then I started research and work on it. So that says it's been it's a two lot. years. Yeah. I've, I've basically, because this is 15, so yeah. yeah uh -huh. I've been working on it for two years. Wow. And, I mean, not full-time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been living with and thinking about this play for two years. And um, and I have a, a wonderful uh, we have a wonderful student dramaturg on mm -hmm. our team Luke mm -hmm. White um, who has really helped the, the dramaturg is a, um, the sort of member of the team that um, does a great deal of research mm -hmm. and analysis of the text and he actually got um, a, a research grant to go to England and do research last summer how cool and so uh, and several of us were there mm -hmm. together for a study abroad experience uh, the lighting designer and the stage manager and Sue and I and uh -huh. the dramaturg and so we went and looked at paintings yes. by Malay mm -hmm. and um, so we it's just been a really really rich experience That's great. research and and the cast we actually did auditions and cast it this past November yes. I so was going to ask how long been, been. has yeah. been involved mm -hmm. in it for about three months mm -hmm. um, so they got involved later but it's been an intense three months it has <laughs> so, so she's tried to funnel everything she learned into your head a little bit yeah <laughs> and the dramaturg has done the same thing so we've just been flooding them with information and it's been it's been great though mm -hmm. because this is such a rich story mm -hmm. like it's a, w mm -hmm. when you come when I first read it I was like this actually happened oh my gosh mm -hmm. this yeah. it's one of those stories that you are like I can see this being written but I can't see it actually have happened uh -huh. but it's great because then you start getting into all the history behind it all and it's just it's enthralling interesting mm -hmm. well you know they say art imitates life and I think a lot, large number of plays are built on someone's knowledge of a personal experience that somebody's had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, it was just taking a real experience, which life is dramatic. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. We all know that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so, you know, taking that real experience and turning it into something like this that is not only informative but really entertaining sounds very intriguing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's great. Um, the the one of the things that we did because we had Christmas break mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. uh, after casting, right? Is we had a couple of rehearsals before Christmas break, and then um, I gave them all assignments like a good teacher. I was just. Um, <laughs> I'll bet Jake had a very busy Christmas. Yeah. Break. Well, they did a lot of reading, but yeah. but also then like Jake, so they each had something to do to to start sort of looking at the world through the eyes of their character. Mm -hmm. So Jake sketched. Um, oh, good for you. And so he's been sketching madly for the last couple months. Have so. you discovered a new art form? Um, doodling. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are nowhere near the quality of Everett Malay, but it's, it was really interesting to try to do the same stuff as him. Uh -huh. Just look at the world uh -huh. the way he does. Right. And he's got such a microscopic eye. It was, mm -hmm. It's been a really interesting experience just trying to do the same type of work he tried to do. Yeah. You know, one thing that impresses me about, all, I've done a lot of interviews with folks from the theater department, and it seems like that the world of theater is so much deeper and richer than people think it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That Then mm -hmm. just look at it and you do a production and somebody says a costume and somebody gets on the stage and does some acting, and that's, it. that's nowhere near all of it, yeah. you know. Yeah. To me, it's all, it seems, and I, again, I'm not in theater. You know, I'm, I'm in arts, but I'm not really in theater. 
And it seems to me like that every, every play, every production seems to be a life-changing event mm -hmm. for all of you. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. that, that somehow it influences your, your view on the world for yeah. life. It's, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I always learn so much. I mean, I've learned about 19th century art mm -hmm. and ideas mm -hmm. and stuff and pre-Raphaelites, but also about, you also learn about the way that different people in different historical eras, like what motivated them. Right, exactly. What, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then just what motivates everybody, mm -hmm. you know, when you're working mm -hmm. out, how do we, so we're having this argument on stage. What is it about? How am I feeling? Mm -hmm. how, you know, I mean, sort of breaking that down right. is, uh, it really, you learn a lot about a lot of different things by doing theater. That's intriguing. I yeah. Find. Now, Sue, so do you, after a production, do you recycle costumes? How does this work? In a manner of speaking, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, we will, um, Put them all in our costume storage room, which is cram packed full of things mm -hmm. that we've built for other shows and are bought or people right. have donated to us, that sort of thing. And the ideal situation, of course, is that a show will come along down the road mm -hmm. and you'll be able to use it again. And we keep that in mind when we're building. You mm -hmm. know, you put extra large hymns and things and right. sew them, put them together in, in ways that will make them easy to get back into and, mm -hmm. and use them again. Mm -hmm. That's always a consideration. So yeah, every now and then you make kind of weird, funky, one-of-a-kind kind of things that you think <laughs> nobody's ever going to use this again. But um, it's very often true that we can take it back out and adjust it, adjust it or it. alter it mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. change it around, take the top from this and put it with a skirt from that and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I'm envisioning exactly that, where you mm -hmm. take pieces and parts of exactly, one yeah. the other. Yeah. Yeah. And for instance, we were saying that Jake probably last time talked to you was here for homes when we did homes back in the mm -hmm. the fall and I was a designer for that we didn't build anything that's all we did was take existing pieces and put them together in different combinations mm -hmm. and figure mm -hmm. out how to to pick and choose just because we had so many things and a shorter time span right this one it's very much building it for these people in this place you know, this show in this right. particular situation. Well, They're and building the, gorgeous dresses. Oh, and that, I, that's what I'm imagining very yeah. much. Now, are there costume changes for each of the major mm -hmm. characters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody so changes clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the, the three main characters, uh -huh. the three main actors have their own dresser. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many. Wow. I mean, they walk off the stage because every scene is set in a different day sometimes there's like four month gap mm -hmm. so they change so obviously you're not wearing the same outfit pieces yeah. of their right. clothes mm -hmm. between every single scene and there's 15 scenes wow yep. and so it, you know and it's like 30 seconds mm -hmm. and so they go off stage go like this somebody just <laughs> whipped clothes off of them whipped other clothes <laughs> on them and then they go back on stage that's, that's that crew i was talking about yeah exactly <laughs> that must be quite an experience <laughs> it, it is quite it's it's more like it's like world of the play world of the play get off stage oh my gosh come on come on come on come on come on <laughs> Kind of like race cars when they stop at the pits. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Right. But exactly this time right. you get the experience of the race car, not the race car driver. Right. <laughs> yeah, the Let actor really, the, the actor really has to trust the the crew person. I think somebody mm -hmm. should write a play of what it's like backstage. Oh, well, they have. They have. <laughs> <laughs> They've written plays about. But it. not quick changes. About this, exactly. Not, not probably not quick. You should be fun this. to watch. You really should. You should look for that play. <laughs> it's an art form. <laughs> We'd all be interested in this. <laughs> and I'm sure there's a whole lot of drama behind the scenes. Well, the, the interesting thing is, you know, everybody everybody assumes that that mm -hmm. there's a lot of drama, mm -hmm. but but the truth is, in theater and dance departments. We're all so busy doing stuff, and we have to work together mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. that if there's a lot of drama, um, it just makes life really difficult. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, yeah. so in yeah. some ways, in my experience, actually, theater and dance departments often have less kind of interpersonal drama than some of the other departments on campus because those people can go into their office and shut the door and not talk to that person across right. the hall for two months if they don't want to. But, um, but that doesn't really work in yeah. what we do. So, mm -hmm. so we, we just sort of keep busy. And well, I have noticed a, a very <laughs> strong sense of family uh -huh. mm -hmm. between all of you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I see that. We spend that so people. much time <laughs> together. <Yeah. laughs> so, so I'm sure that uh, both of you, all the students you've had years and years ago, still stick out in your mind and you mm -hmm. maybe oh, yeah. you can stay in touch with. Of yeah. course. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that family sense carries on mm -hmm. way beyond 
the right. teaching time. I, I, I would say probably a third of my Facebook friends are former students. Mm -hmm. so. My father-in-law was a professor, and I noticed that his Facebook friends were all, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, yep. past students and colleagues, you know, yeah. or not all, but a lot, large number. So that's your yeah. whole world, you know, in a you lot of ways. You gotta keep up, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're, yeah, you gotta know what happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Jake, that means that when you leave here, we're all gonna wait to see what you're doing next, which is what? Actually, I am currently in the process of auditioning for several different theaters, mm -hmm. looking for a mm -hmm. job, hopefully, to come my way. Um, so, so you're going professional then when you leave here? I am hoping to, mm -hmm. yes. Good for you. Now, where is all this? He's, he's also done quite a bit of uh, stage combat work, and so that's one of the areas that he's really yeah. interested in I working in. I think I remember hearing mm -hmm. that about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so where are you hoping to go? Do you have any specific, like some people say New York, some people say, you know, what, what are you thinking? Well, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of New York at the current mm -hmm. moment um, in my life, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, currently I've... Um, just a few weeks ago, I auditioned for the Institute of Outdoor Theater. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, uh, re I auditioned for uh, theaters like Horn in the West, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Pennsylvania Renaissance Festival, mm -hmm. and Snow Camp um, over in Greensboro, I believe. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I auditioned for them, uh, waiting to hear back from them once they finish their auditioning processes. And um, this upcoming weekend, I actually have a audition for Barter Theater up in Virginia. Oh, that's mm -hmm. not far away at all. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, going to go see what can come out of that, and then I have a few other theaters on my list that I'm planning to send out applications to. Do you ever intend to be like these ladies and work for a college or a university? <laughs> I honestly, I have been seriously questioning whether or not I will do that. Um, I know I have long-term plans of starting up a theater company with some uh, educational aspect to it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I would be coming back to a university, perhaps, maybe, at some point in my life. But at the current moment, I just that's have so a, many that's ideas. Not a specific goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right now, I don't it's believe. It's a whole world of possibilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't believe I've quite honed my own skills and my own theories within the theater world to really be able to teach that to other Not people. Not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> Got to build some experience. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, did you have, either one of you have a, a career like he's talking about where you went out and did something else for a while and then came back to the educational world or what? Um, I... Um, I did acting in undergrad, but then got really interested in theater history and in dramaturgy. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I am from Minnesota originally, and so I did uh, dramaturgy work at the Guthrie Theater mm -hmm. in Minnesota for mm -hmm. several years after college. Um, and then kind of waited tables to help pay the bills um, <laughs> before going to graduate school. Mm -hmm. but, I, but within a few months of doing that, it became clear to me that I wanted to be back in the university, uh -huh. that that's what I really wanted to do. Right. Um, but it was a, a fantastic experience. It was really great life experience and do, what working you in can that do professional now, right. theater. Mm -hmm. um, and then I you know, was able to bring that into grad school and into teaching. Now, what about so. you, Sue? Well, I actually took a year off in between undergraduate school and graduate school and worked, and that was all it took to convince me that I needed to go back to graduate school. <laughs> I thought, I can't, I can't do this the rest of my life. So, so I went back and, yeah, that's what I did. I mean, I got my, mm -hmm. my MFA and started teaching, and I've been doing that ever okay. since. <laughs> I, did, I did work, you know, in the summers, like mm -hmm. the kind of thing Jake's mm -hmm. talking about. I actually worked at snow camp one summer um, through graduate school. But once, um, and I've, you know, I've done a few things here and there. Um, in this area, mm -hmm. you know, when Blowing Rock mm -hmm. Stage was still mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. going on, and at least McRae and that sort of right. thing. But pretty much, yeah, I just went into teaching, and I've been doing that ever <laughs> since. So you knew that was where you were yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really took me that year to go, yep, that's really where I need to be. So, yeah. Well, some of us find it quicker than others. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this production, let's get to the, uh, the, big, the meat of it. Uh -huh. Where is it and when is it? It's at the Valborg Theater on Howard Street behind the Church and Center. Um, it runs from Wednesday, February 25th through uh, Sunday, March 1st. 
Uh, the shows are at 7.30, except for on that Sunday, March 1st, when the show's at 2. It's a matinee. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get tickets from the Valborg box office. Uh, the phone number is 828-262-3063. And you can also get them from our website, which is theater.appstate.edu. That's very good. You <laughs> recited all of that. Okay. <laughs> very good. <laughs> I hope you will join them, join us and them at this production and, and not miss it. You have several, how many opportunities, how many performances is five. that? Five performances. Yep, five performances. So you have five chances to get in there and, and see this production, and I think that's great. Uh, I hope you all will be back with us again soon. Jake, I don't know if I'll see you again. Uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but do check this production out. Check our website for links to this and a lot more. Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years.